there we have the design cut exactly to the size of the glass. Now that's how it looks in the frame now. For me, it's a bit washed out. So here is where it becomes very creative. Now I've got a lot of offcuts of veneer that I use, and obviously you might not have that, but I guarantee if you go to a shop that does veneering, they'll let you have some offcuts. And what I've got is a piece of Vivona, which is an offcut, and uh, really there's not much I could do with it. I could make a box or what have you, but I'm gonna use it to highlight this particular embroidery I've got here. You see, so got a blemish there, cracked ends there, and a split right here. But I'm hoping that with the right placement, we should be able to get away with that. Now if I put the glass over the top, bring it up to this bottom edge here, and I've got a little bit of broken veneer there, and there's a split here, and that mark there. What I'll do is grab the frame, put it over the top, and I'm fortunate because the frame now covers the break up here, and the break down here, and this blemish here, I think, will disappear when I cut the oval. So what I've got here is a plywood oval that I made. And if you want to know how to make these, check it out there. It's a video I did for Woodworking Masterclass. Now for this particular one, all I did was went to Word on the computer and went to Shapes. And I picked the distance I wanted here, which I think it was 300 mil and from here, which is 200 mil, and then press create oval and printed it out. And then stuck it onto a piece of plywood and cut around it. If you don't have access to Word or you're not comfortable doing that, again, if you check that video out at Woodworking Masterclass, I'll show you how you can make ovals without even using a compass or anything tricky. It's just done a couple of nails and a piece of wood. But nonetheless, Get your oval, and I've worked out the oval over this embroidery. Looks really nice. So pop that to one side, grab my knife, and what I'm gonna do is keep this as my straight edge down the bottom, and then I'm gonna cut around the glass. That'll give me the square. As I've said before, when you're cutting veneer, you only very, very light pressure and don't try and do it in one cut because if you do, you're gonna, in a lot of cases, tear the veneer. And this Vivona is extremely fragile, so I don't want to force it. And when it comes away, it just comes away easily like that. And those bits, I've got a big box of real small scraps. I throw those in there and when I do marquetry and do inlay work, these are the bits that I use. Now I've got to look at that and think that out right, sir, where I'm going to place the circle and how I want it. If you look at that timber there, it's obviously light here and dark. Now do I want that to look like a mountain in the background or do I want it this way to make the dark bits look like mountains and that to look like the sky? I'll have a look at the piece that I'm working with. And to me, I prefer to have the pandas in this open area here, and these possibly could be dark clouds coming down. But it's personal preference, it doesn't matter, it's whatever pleases you. And that's the great thing about doing woodwork, it's what pleases you, or in this case, pleases the wife. And seeing she doesn't work with veneer, I think I've got a couple of head, points head start on her. So now I'm going to put this oval. I've got a little bit of double-sided sticky tape there and I'm going to place it so it's central. Now I'll just get my ruler and I'll measure in from the sides and the measure top and bottom. About 320. It's about 320. So I reckon that's pretty well spot on and central. If you wanted, obviously you could mark centre lines here and centre lines here and line it up that way and that could be an easier way of doing it. And now I'm just going to trace around using a knife and cut that oval out. I'm not going to do it in one 
head, I'll do it in sections, and you will hear and feel when you're actually through the veneer. Then move on to the next section. And there we have it. This piece here I'll save for something else, but we dodged a bullet and we got hold of that nasty little hole there. Now we've got a couple of little mishaps here where that's come apart, but really that's not an issue. What I'll do is get a bit of sticky tape. Put that together. And also up here where we've got a bit of a tear, we'll do the same thing. Now, there's something nice about working inside. It um, doesn't seem as hurried. Well, it can't be, can it? All right, now, grab a little bit of glue. And where we've got those two tears, I'm just going to put a little dab of glue on each side. And where was the other one up here? Top on the glue. Now bend it very carefully and you just slide the glue in the crease that is visible when you bend that sticky tape. Same here. And just wipe the excess off. And just let that sit for a little while and it should dry quite nicely. Mm -hmm. 